Do you want to just leave the past in the past? Hi there and welcome back to Ask Dr. Syra, the show where I answer your questions about personal growth, mental health and relationships. Today's question comes from Shazad. Shazad says, I don't feel comfortable thinking about the bad things that happened to me. Why can't we just leave the past in the past? I don't feel comfortable thinking about the bad things that happened to me. Why can't we just leave the past in the past? This is a really common question that I get from clients, right? That like, it's over, it happened, I can't change it. Why do we need to talk about it? Because it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It is uncomfortable to talk about difficult things. And that's part of what therapy is, is actually facing some of those difficult things that you haven't really wanted to look at or think about um, with somebody who knows how to help guide you through that. So the three things I would say as we're kind of exploring this question, the first I want to talk to you a little bit about parts. So parts, information and meaning. Okay, parts, information and meaning. So let's start with parts. When something happens to us as a little kid, there's a philosophy in psychology called internal family systems that says when something happens to us, there's kind of a, a stopping that happens of development. So say, for example, um, okay, when I was five years old, we moved to Canada from England. So at that time, I was kind of growing in a particular way. And then the move created a change, right? There was a change that happened. Nobody's fault, just a change. And there were some new experiences that were coming. And I didn't have the resources, the inner resources to manage one of those experiences. It's something very silly and simple. It was my accent. So I came with a little British accent. And I remember in kindergarten, um, the kids kind of teasing me and laughing at me about my accent. And so I put that away. <laughs> pretty fast and I adopted a Canadian accent. Now, in a way, <laughs> there's like a little British girl that just got tucked away, right? And just put away and like, see you later. We don't need you. We're now changing into this new self. Now that's a really kind of a simple example, but we do that all the time as children. When, when it's time for change, we put away a part of us and that's natural. That's part of how we grow. What's not so natural is when we end up putting parts of ourselves away because of traumatic events, right? So if um, something really difficult happens and now you're putting a really significant, that part of you away, okay, so now there's a problem because let me, let me give you an example. Let's see. Um, hmm. What can I think of as an example? Oh, here's one. Here's a good one. So when I was six years old, um, I was we were learning how to play baseball, grade one or kindergarten grade one, something like that. And we were paired up with older kids. So each kindergartner was paired up with like a third grader or something. And we we're playing catch. And so the point was, you know, one of the kids throws the ball and the other, you know, the game of catch. <laughs> pretty, pretty basic. So nobody explained to me the game of catch and I had never seen catch. It was not something that was like done in my, or maybe my, maybe somebody was doing it, but I wasn't paying attention. So I'm standing there as a six year old and this kid, and I'm wearing my brand new glasses and this kid takes this ball and like throws it at my face and it hits my face and my glasses fall to the floor and it really hurts and everyone's laughing or at least he's laughing, but it feels like everyone's laughing. It's like, didn't you see that? You're supposed to catch it. In that moment, when I think back, you know, I did some work with my therapist around this and what I realized was that was a moment I put away my athleticism. I told myself, oh, I guess I'm not very sports-like. I'm not a sporty person. And so that potential for sports kind of got tucked away and put away and left behind because I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm not good at catching, so I must not be good at games. I'm not good at sports. This is a six-year-old deciding this, right? So it's not like logical. <laughs> it doesn't make sense that it's like, oh, I guess I'm just bad at that. And so what happens is that this, this thing happens. I, I tuck this part away. And then for my entire life, I'm telling myself the story of I'm not athletic. I'm not athletic. I'm not athletic. I'm not good at sports. I'm not good at anything to do with the physical body. Um... And I start believing it. I'm clumsy. I don't like all of these clumsy and 
you know, too timid and all of these things. Now in sixth grade, I got a couple of opportunities to engage in sports again, and I did and I loved it. And so it kind of, I brought that part kind of back. And then as I moved up in the years, it's like, again, I, I felt afraid to compete. And so, okay, I'm not good at sports. So this story of not being good at sports has stayed with me for like decades. And it's only a couple of years ago when I started getting really interested in fitness that that story changed in my own mind to say, wait a minute, maybe there was a part of me that always was kind of, you know, comfortable in my body and athletic, but I kind of tucked that away. And so what if I brought that back? So the reason I share this story is to help you start thinking about what are the missing parts in you, right? What are the parts that got tucked away because of something as simple as a ball hitting your face? It doesn't have to be like a big, difficult thing that happens, something that simple, but to a child, it feels significant, right? So that's the first reason. The reason we look at our past or think about our past is that we get a chance to bring back some of those missing parts and say, wait a minute, I can be, I can try sports. Why not? Why not? Right? So that's the first thing is the missing parts. The second is there's a difference between information and camping out. So let me explain. There's a drive from Calgary to Alberta on the Trans-Canada Highway. For those from this part of the world, you'll know that drive. If you've ever done it, it's absolutely beautiful. And there's it basically it's tiny towns along the way and you kind of fill up gas and keep going, fill up gas and keep going. Now along this highway, there are some information booths, right? So there's like a little, like a rest stop with a map and you know, you can read some stuff about the area. These are along, you know, maybe three or four along the road of, it's like a 12 hour drive. So the information stop is not the hotel, right? The information stop, you go there, you check it out, you learn about the area, then you get back in your car and you move on, right? And you spend the night at the hotel. You don't spend the night in the information stop. So looking in our past is kind of like that. It's an information stop, right? You, you're going there, you're checking it out, you're learning about the area, but then you move on. You don't camp there. You don't set up shop there. You don't, that's not a hotel. But sometimes when people are doing their childhood trauma work, they end up like sleeping over at the information stop. It's like, that's not what this was designed for. It was to get some information and then use that information to move forward on your journey. And so I agree with you that, you know, we need to leave the past in the past in that way, right? We visit it, we learn something from it, and then we leave it, we move on. Otherwise, that energy, that pain is just going to keep seeping into your life today. If every time you revisit that, that event, you're bringing back up those same emotions and those same memories. You can change that through therapy and other modalities. You can change that way of thinking about the past. But the point is, it's okay to examine the past. Just don't live there. Okay, so that's the second one is that it's just for information. It's for, to help us figure out who we are. It, it's, in, it's important, I think, to know where you come from and who you are. The last thing I would say is has to do with meaning. So whatever the event was, the difficult event of your childhood or the difficult event of your past, what does it mean to you today? What does it mean to you today? So um, the example, the example that I sometimes give is my parents um, split up when I was 10. And at the time it was horribly painful and I missed my dad so much and, you know, lots of things. It was hard. But looking back, looking back, when I think about that life event that happened, I'm actually really grateful because years later I can see how they definitely were not a match <laughs> as far as a happy, healthy couple. And him leaving was actually maybe a good thing for how the family, how our family thrived after he left. And my stepdad came into the picture who raised me, right? And he wouldn't have been there had my mom still been in this relationship with my dad. So you can kind of look back, you know, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, and and help yourself to make meaning of it in a different way, in a way that feels like it adds to the to the story of your life rather than it takes away from the story of your life. Right. So rather than, oh, we had to leave England and it was so hard. It's like, oh, we got to come to Canada and there's new opportunities. Right. My dad left and it was hard, but 
it made space in my mom's life to actually find a partner who was better matched for her, right? So what did you make that difficult event mean? If you're going to make it mean, um, and so life sucks, well, then it's not really useful to go exploring there, right? Because you're not, you're not learning anything. You're not growing. What do you make it mean? So those are the three things I would say about that question about, you know, what's the purpose of, of reviewing or looking back at the bad things is first is you might be able to claim to, to look at and claim some missing parts of yourself. Um, it's an information stop. It's not a hotel. And finally, you know, what, what have you made it mean? And what have you perhaps still been carrying? Some of it you might want to let go, right? When you know, oh, the reason I find it hard to trust men is because my dad was not, he left my mom and so he broke trust by that. Ah, now I don't have to treat my husband with distrust because actually our relationship has nothing to do with that. But those old tapes, those old tracks have been formed in my mind and I'm just projecting them. That's a problem right? So if I know that, then I can fix this. So knowing what, why we do things helps us not repeat those patterns and carry it forward into our future. So those are my thoughts for that one. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, join us on a Monday if we're still, I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but if we're still doing Monday musings, you'll know by going on our website. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye.